Welcome back to the Public Housing Resident Organizing and Participation Toolkit Training Series. This training series is meant to walk public housing residents through how to organize and run a successful resident council so that you can improve your housing and community. We encourage you to participate in the entire training series. This training is based on Guide 8, Resident Management Corporations. As you go through the training, you may want to refer to the guide. This training will support you in learning about resident management corporations. The training will cover what resident management corporations, referred to as RMCs, are the history of RMCs, an example of resident management today, Goose Homes in New Orleans, Louisiana, considerations around forming an RMC, what it takes to form an RMC, RMC responsibilities. HUD funding and technical assistance for RMCs, and related resources. First, some key points we'll cover during this training. HUD rules allow residents to form resident management corporations and manage their property. The RMC can take over some or all of the management responsibilities that are normally done by the housing agency by contracting with the housing agency. The resident council, or a majority of residents, must support the plan. Residents who have pursued resident management report that it is a difficult process that requires intense training and preparation, as well as ongoing hard work and commitment from residents. It also offers unique benefits that otherwise aren't available to most residents. HUD encourages residents to explore resident management. The rules for creating and running RMCs are part of the Code of Federal Regulations. The specific regulations are linked in the resources section. RMCs are organizations formed by residents of public housing to manage their own property. If there is an RMC, the housing agency still owns the property. The RMC can take over some or all of the management responsibilities. The RMC is generally paid by the housing agency, but sometimes is paid directly by HUD. The RMC has paid staff who can be residents. HUD encourages resident management and describes the potential benefits as including improved quality of life, dignity from meaningful work, and meaningful participation in the management of the housing development. Resident management corporations have a long and successful history of managing public housing, though very few RMCs exist today. The law that established the federal public housing system allows for resident management of public housing in order to improve living conditions. RMCs grew out of the civil rights movement of the 1960s and 70s. Residents of public housing often experience poor housing conditions and disinvestment in their homes. Some organized residents pushed for greater resident control of their own housing. In 1971, residents in Boston created the first RMC at Bromley Heath Public Housing. Residents in St. Louis quickly followed, and soon many public housing residents were pursuing resident management. In 1987, Congress amended public housing laws to give residents more reasons to create RMCs. Now, if residents save money by operating more efficiently, they can use that money for repairs or other benefits. In 1992, HUD found that resident management is better than traditional management in many areas, especially annual inspections, resident moveouts, and resident recertification. When RMCs took over all management services, maintenance and social service programs also improved. However, the number of RMCs has declined over the years, and today very few remain. HUD remains committed to resident management. Maybe your building will be the next RMC. An excellent example of resident management today comes from New Orleans. Residents of the Goose Homes in New Orleans first started exploring resident management in 1996. In 1998, they formed the Goose Homes RMC. In 2000, the RMC entered into dual management with the Housing Agency of New Orleans, or HANO. Residents and RMC staff shadowed HANO employees to learn everything about running their property, from maintenance to recertification paperwork to making purchase orders. In 2004, the RMC took over all management functions all at once. Eight years after beginning the process, the RMC was fully in control of their own housing. However, the RMC still works with HANO. Certain large purchases must be approved by HANO, and public housing funding comes through HANO. The RMC keeps strict control of its books. They hire an outside auditor and are also audited by HANO, 
to make sure they are efficiently spending money. In 2012, the RMC also became a housing developer. They closed on funding to redevelop Goost Homes and create new affordable housing units. The Goost Home RMC continues to look to the future. Ms. Wiggins, the co-founder and president of the RMC, is an expert resource for residents considering resident management and has consulted with many resident councils across the U.S. She can be contacted through the Goost Homes website. Other residents can benefit from the experiences of the Goost Homes residents. Ms. Wiggins of the Goost Homes RMC advises other public housing residents that forming a resident management corporation is an opportunity to improve your conditions. Get a lawyer, get a consultant, and negotiate your deal. She also cautions that they are not for everybody. Residents must be willing to learn and put in hours of effort. Many of the organizations and resources listed in the resource section of this training can help. Let's do a knowledge check. What does RMC stand for? A, residents making changes. B, resident made clothing. C, resident management corporation, or? D, resident municipal corporation. We'll pause for you to consider your answer. You can also pause the video if you would like to consult the guide. The correct answer is C, Resident Management Corporation. We have another knowledge check question. The first resident run public housing was where? A, Boston, Massachusetts. B, St. Louis, Missouri. C, San Francisco, California, or? D, Duluth, Minnesota. We'll pause while you consider your answer. If you said, A, Boston, you got it. St. Louis was close behind, but Boston was first. There are some things your resident council should do before jumping into resident management. First, make sure your resident council is strong. Resident management is a big commitment. Second, measure the commitment that residents have. The majority of residents need to be on board and willing to put in time and effort. Ask yourself, does the resident council meet regularly with good attendance? Is the board committed and do board members have time for their tasks? Is the resident council training new leaders to take over when board members transition out? Measure how committed residents are. Don't just ask, do you want to form an RMC? Ask residents how much they can support the effort and in what ways. Third, hire a lawyer or find other outside help. Eventually in the process, you will need to hire or find pro bono help from a lawyer and perhaps others like an organizer or consultant. Finally, be willing to learn. You do not have to be a legal expert, know all of HUD's regulations, or be an experienced community organizer to form an RMC. But you and your board must be willing to learn those things and more. See the resources section of this training for more information. Residents can form an RMC in several different ways. The RMC may cover one or more properties within the same housing agency. The RMC may be a separate organization from the resident council, or one organization may serve as both RMC and resident council. The RMC can also be made up of more than one resident council. An organization that serves as both must meet HUD requirements for both a duly elected resident council and an RMC. Residents from one or more properties may also form an RMC without having a resident council. It is a good idea to talk to a lawyer to figure out which option is best for you. You may be able to find free or low-cost legal help through a legal aid society, local bar association, or a law school. HUD has requirements for an organization that wants to take on resident management and serve as an RMC. The RMC must incorporate as a nonprofit in your state, be established by residents, either directly or through one or more resident councils, have a board to oversee any staff, generally including a property manager. Have a qualified housing management specialist as defined by HUD to help with training and needs assessment and sign a contract with the housing agency specifying what roles the RMC will take on. See the rules for RMCs at 24 CFR 964.120.
If one or more resident councils are forming the RMC, those resident councils also must meet certain requirements. They must follow HUD guidelines as the duly elected resident council, approve the establishment of the RMC, have representation on the RMC board. If the RMC and the resident council are one organization, many of these requirements are met automatically. Let's do another knowledge check. When residents want to form a resident management corporation, they must A. First form a duly elected resident council. B. Work with resident councils in other buildings within the PHA. C. Form the RMC first. No resident council is required. Or D. Any of these models is possible. We'll pause a moment for you to consider your answer. The right answer is D. There are several possible models for forming an RMC. First, form a duly elected resident council. Work with resident councils and other buildings within the PHA. Form the RMC first. No resident council is required. Again, the rules are at 24 CFR 964.120. To get started forming an RMC, you will need to demonstrate that your group can take on the roles at once. The first steps of forming an RMC involve planning and training residents. You will want to consult a lawyer. And hire a housing management specialist. You may be able to find someone willing to offer services for free, especially for consultations before diving in. You should also talk to other RMCs around the country. Consider what responsibilities the RMC wants to take on and whether a transitional dual management period would be helpful. Goose Tomes in New Orleans used a four-year period of dual management to share responsibilities with the housing agency and shadow PHA employees. Remember, the RMC can add or remove some of its responsibilities over time in negotiation with the housing agency. HUD requires that RMCs work with qualified housing management specialists. That person can help with the early stages of exploring if an RMC is a good idea for you and your fellow residents. The specialist helps residents considering an RMC. Determine if an RMC is worthwhile. Determine which roles the RMC should take on. Train residents as potential RMC employees. Design and implement programming and activities for residents and. Understand HUD rule. Funding may be available through the housing agency for exploratory work with a specialist. You could also look at local foundations or other funding sources. The RMC can take over some or all of the management functions of your property or properties. Examples of tasks that RMCs commonly negotiate with the housing agency over control include Personnel, including hiring and supervising management and maintenance staff. Resident screening, which includes receiving applications, screening applicants, and assigning units. Resident certifications and orientation. Lease enforcement, including rent collection billing, enforcing rules, monitoring tenant accounts, and carrying out evictions. Financial management, including preparing and overseeing budgets, payroll, and accounts. Security, such as providing personnel and coordinating with police. Property maintenance, including conducting annual inspections, taking work orders, carrying out regular maintenance, and extraordinary repairs. Procurement, including maintaining inventory, purchasing supplies, soliciting bids, and services such as providing supportive services for residents, including community center space, trainings, and after-school programs. The RMC can take on any responsibility that is in line with the HUD contract for public housing funding and in compliance with the law. Once residents are prepared, the next step is negotiating a management contract between the RMC and the housing agency. The housing agency must negotiate in good faith. If the RMC believes that that is not happening, the RMC can appeal to HUD. The contract determines which roles the RMC and the housing agency will each take on, including if there will be a dual management arrangement or if the RMC will take on all management roles. The contract also outlines how the housing agency will monitor and provide oversight to the RMC. 
Finally, the contract will address special rights the RMC has during modernization if the housing agency plans to conduct major repairs or redevelopment of the property. The RMC can perform or manage the repairs itself if it is qualified, including being licensed, bonded, and insured. After the RMC signs the management contract, the housing agency becomes responsible for monitoring the progress of the RMC. This monitoring must occur at least once a year. The RMC and the housing agency should clarify in the management contract what will be assessed. The RMC will need to prepare financial reports and other documents to show that management is being performed efficiently and properly. The RMC should prepare for this monitoring by double-checking financial records, preparing files for review, and preparing any reports required. Over time, the RMC and the housing agency may decide to renegotiate the contract. The RMC may wish to take on more or less responsibility, or the RMC may decide it is ready to move on from a limited contract, like dual management, and is ready to take on all management of the property. HUD rules allow an RMC to petition HUD directly for a management contract instead of contracting with the housing agency. This is called an annual contributions contract. To win HUD approval, the RMC must show it is not in violation of any requirement that calls into question the RMC's ability to carry out its responsibilities. The RMC must also be designated as at least a standard performer by HUD. If the petition is approved, HUD becomes responsible for direct oversight and monitoring of the RMC, and the housing agency is no longer involved. The RMC must take on primary management. This arrangement is very rare and it is more appropriate for well-established RMCs. Let's do another knowledge check. When the RMC is ready to sign a contract with the PHA, the RMC must... A, be ready to take on all management responsibilities. B, first go through a period of dual management with the PHA. C, show it can perform the roles it wants to take on, or... D, first sign a contract with HUD. We'll pause for you to consider your answer. The correct answer is C. The RMC must show it is capable of fulfilling the roles it wishes to take on. A is wrong because the RMC is not required to take on all management responsibilities and can negotiate which roles it wishes to take on. B is also incorrect because dual management is not required. And even if an RMC chooses dual management, the contract with the PHA comes first. Finally, D is wrong because most RMCs negotiate and partner only with the PHA and not with HUD directly. One final knowledge check. What is HUD's policy for resident management of public housing? A, HUD has a policy of supporting resident management. B. HUD discourages resident management because it is difficult, or? C. HUD does not have a policy regarding resident management, but some PHAs do. We'll pause for you to consider your answer. The answer is A. HUD does support resident management, even though it does present challenges. These resources are related to the Guide 8 training. If you access the downloadable slides or the guide for this training, you will find clickable links. Also, please note that the resources here include the related section of the Code of Federal Regulations, the CFR. Thank you for participating in this training. This training is part of the Public Housing Resident Organizing and Participation Toolkit. The full toolkit includes topical guides, customizable resident council documents and forms, tools related to tenant participation funds, and case studies of resident organizations around the country. The next training in this series is on Guide 9, Tenant Participation Funds.